How do? It's time to attach the fretboard and then think about loads of other stuff before we can put these body wings on for this neck through five string multi scale headless bass. Oh, yes. Who's nicked me pencil? Someone's nicked me pencil. Right, so I think this is where I left you last time. Uh, so the first job I'm going to do is attach this fretboard. Um, so I could just glue that on, but because we've got this wheel adjustment, I want that to just come into this last area here. It's going to look a little bit like that. The maple that's underneath i'm just painting that black inside that hole so all you're gonna see is that a nice black section running in line with all of those frets and i think that'll look really rather nice So I can put a cocktail stick in there, or a tiny piece of one anyway. And again, it only just needs to poke out so that I can get it on here. Moment of truth. Can we actually put the glue on? Oh! Now at this end, I do want to go almost sparingly because what I don't want is a load of glue splurge to start falling into here. So I am just going to go a little bit careful with the glue along that point so it's not wickedly thick. I can see I've drawn a line where the edge of the fretboard actually is going to sit. At no point does the fretboard get onto this maple. So now it's just a case of putting on at least 3,000 clamps or as many as you've got. So we're going to have the first clamp is completely on top of that pin to make sure that's pushed down enough there. Now you want a lot of clamps but they don't actually have to be on particularly tight. You're just making sure that you can just see it squeezing the glue out. You can definitely over tighten. Um, and then we squeeze every last ounce of glue out and there's actually not enough left to glue the board together. So all we're doing here is making sure that there aren't any gaps, that everything is clamped up enough that there can't possibly be any gaps between the wood. There we go, that should do that. Time for a brew, I think. Okay, so fretboard glued on. There's a little bit, a little bit of glue splurge around, but that's all right, because the vast majority of that is obviously going to be rid of uh, as we taper in. The little bit of glue splurge on here we can clean up later. Right, so a few things to do before we can mark off this. I need to figure out exactly where these bridge pins are going to sit because what i don't want is for that to sit out the back of the body um because we've discussed this i've discussed this with the client and we both agree if they stand proud they're just going to get knocked so let's not do that we're going to have them inbound 35 inch scale from the zero fret down there coming along to about there okay so that's where that's gonna sit so that's gonna sit there like that so if that goes there I know that I've got a little bit of cover in there uh, at this end we've got the peak here hanging around this kind of 13th fret which is what we decided we wanted as well so that wants to go on there and then that needs to be 
where that can continue so that probably wants to go that way a little bit right, so i'm just going to remove that for a second and have that so that it can continue like that i might even just nudge that a little bit further so i've got a guaranteed flow into there uh, because at this end at there it's absolutely fine if that's a little bit further back or a little bit further forward it's not going to make a staggering difference uh, right so that's where i want things to sit okay now the reason i want to know where that 33 inch scale is um, is so that i know what angle to put these at because it's it's a visual thing as much as any so that is the scale length across there that's where all the bridge sections need to line up um, and what we've said is as they fit in there we want both of these to run parallel with each other not to be splaying further out because that just looks funky um, but about halfway between that angle and that angle but running parallel that one is 112 degrees this one is that's 108 degrees that's 112 degrees so the pickups then just need to be 110 bang on don't they yay so then that can go through there and we know that's going to be correct so what i'm going to do is just put a few of those on just as a bit of a guide really and then then we need to decide where these are going to go right so pickups in place let's have a look so i've put this one at a standard regulation 58 millimeters from the bridge line to the center point on there using the angle that we've got along that center line and center string five string uh okay this one yeah that's that's where the, the puzzle comes in so it doesn't want to be right up against the neck because that gets in the way when you start slapping stuff uh there's no point being super close because then there's not going to be a massive tonal difference between the two so how about smack in the middle that would seem to work well for me who's licked me pencil someone's licked me pencil there we go, got a pencil. So these are just more marking lines, just to make sure that when we move the body, put it back on, I've got multiple places where I can line the body up to make sure that everything's in the right place. The next thing I'm going to do, now that we've got where the pickups are actually marked off, is I'm going to do a rough carve, um, comfort carve. And then once I've got that marked off, where that carve's going to be, I can then come in from different parts in here and take out some of that extra weight relief. So for the comfort carve, drawing an outline on the back and on that top, all I've got to do is go through with the saw and do that stop cut technique again, all the way around joining up those lines. And yes, I'm using my posh new Japanese saw. Then simply go in with the chisel and again, connect those two lines. Knowing that any chip off can only go up to that next cut. You can then get in there with a rasp, take off more big chunks. And I don't use power sanders, but when I do, I like one of these. This is a, a finger sander, perfect for jobs like this. Right, 
right so once the the back belly carve and I've done the the arm carve on the front as well comfort carve it's then just kind of fitting it in place and seeing what's going to feel right does does that need to come back a little bit more can I take this a little bit further into there um, how's that is that nice that that's quite a nice look on the top of there by no stretch is this finished that will get done once it's attached but taking the big chunks off allows me to then think where can I drill in here to take extra weight off these pieces hmm right so hmm yeah maybe a little bit more off that corner okay so for drilling holes in here I'm going to have a carved area in here like a Celtic rope design that's then going to be resin flat uh, so I've decided that's going to go that deep so I can't drill any holes anywhere near that line so I've got this gap I can put a hole probably that kind of size uh, along here I also then have marked off where these pickups are going so I can go down there I don't want to interrupt those spaces so I've got some room either side I now have because of this carving I've got a limit to how far in I can go so I know once I've picked out which drill bit I'm going to use I've got pretty much that depth all the way across I can maybe go a little bit deeper on that section um, and then drill through in the middles through there uh, and see what kind of weight we can take off with that Uh, so now that I've drilled all the way along uh, where I can without any kind of a risk to going anywhere near the slopes or I don't want to go anywhere near these pickup cavities so they've got nice strong edges on there as well but I am just going to go through with a chisel now and flatten off these edges which just take a tiny bit more weight off uh, but also just makes it look a bit neater doesn't it even though it's never ever going to be seen once the glue goes on I just thought I'd get inside here and just round off this interior section again just to smooth out those slightly different depths that I had with the drill So now we come to the time of gluing this on. Hooray! Um, so I've got my clamps at the ready. So I've tried it, test fit, worked well. So now it's just a matter of putting the glue on. Try not to just pour glue all the way down the hole. And with that, we have glue. Okie dokes. So, putting this on, always with the glue up, give it a bit of a rub. Get that suction going on in there. And I tend to find if we clamp sideways, it aligns things really nicely. And we don't tend to get a lot of slippage then. Uh, that kind of guarantees we're in the right place that way and it's less likely to move that way as well. So by the time we've rubbed that together and then put our clamps on, it's not going to go anywhere, is it? Can we get that in there? Ooh, good. Just going to put that. Well, oh, let's put that right on there, I think. And there we are, half a base done. Well, 
roughly carved and hollowed out anyway. Now, the bottom half, I need to make sure I know exactly where all of the knobs and buttons and switches and everything else is gonna go, battery pack, all that sort of stuff. So, I'm gonna make a call to the client, make sure they're gonna be in exactly where he wants them. And in the meantime, you watch this video, and I'll see you next week. Toodle pips. No, seriously, click here. Go on, God bless. Click, click, click.